I'm not going to talk to you. But why are you a liar? I'm not going to talk to you. Why are you a liar? Why are you a f***ing liar? Any questions? Shut up! Why are you a f***ing liar? You're a liar! Ladies and gentlemen. Answer the question! You're a f***ing liar! Every now and then. It's alright. You're a liar! It's not going to do out. It's not going to do out. You're a f***ing liar! Ladies and gentlemen. Answer the question then. Tell me about Jesus. Speaker's Corner attracts people who are emotionally unstable. Yes. Yes. This is all that you have here. Yes, yes. That's okay. what you said, that's what I came to ask you. Are there any so, tough questions answer, answer the on question. this topic? You're a fool. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, bro? Can you hear me? Good. Great. Cash, can you hear me? Don't engage, like, pay attention to what we're talking about. Yeah? Asif, don't engage. Pay attention to what we're talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to talk about today is how you have seen in front of your own eyes the secular progressive state crumble in front of Islamist bullying and aggression. Just recently, a movie was released by Muslims, Shia Muslims, called The Lady of Heaven. It's a story telling a narrative according to the Shia understanding of Islam. It was, it was directed by Muslims, written by Muslims, acted by Muslims, filmed by Muslims. And it was released in Cineworld. And what we saw, ladies and gentlemen, were thuggish mobs descend out in front of Cineworld cinemas demanding that that movie be shut down. And they succeeded. This is only one of the latest number of examples of where liberal progressive state has demonstrated its yellow-bellied, lily-livered, spineless attitude towards the bullying Islamist agenda in our country. Another example is being protested right there, right now. A film called The Kashmir Files. Its director was going to give a talk at Oxford University and because the Islamist Muslims were outraged at this prospect, Oxford University shut down freedom of speech and that's why that crowd of people are in Speaker's Corner right now. And that stands on top another example. Another example of Batley and Spen, where a teacher teaching about what blasphemy was to his students used an example that Muslims considered blasphemous. He wasn't trying to celebrate the blasphemy. He wasn't trying to make people blaspheme. He was using an example of what blasphemy was. Mobs of Muslims descended on the school, made threats against his life, and now that teacher had to have protective custody to protect him and his family. And that stands on top of what happened in Birmingham and Bradford where Muslim mobs stood outside of schools protesting the teaching of LGBTQ teaching in our schools. Now, I want to be clear. I don't blame Muslims for standing up for the things that they consider blasphemy. I don't condemn Muslims for standing up against LGBT education in schools. My examples are given to demonstrate to all of you that the sick, secular, liberal, progressive state is cowering in front of Islamist militancy. It is cowering in front of the Islamist agenda because the social elites that make the decisions are more interested in a peaceful life in which their comfort 
and their money-making ways are never disturbed by social conflict. And so it is easier for them to concede ground again and again and again. But each time they concede ground, your freedom of speech becomes increasingly limited. Your ability to speak out for what is right and what is true becomes less and less. This kind of cowardice is the slow death of the West. The West is dying cut by cut by cut. And it is dying because Westerners don't believe that they have anything to fight for. Because Westerners don't believe in the project of the West. And so for the individual comfort they are willing to surrender freedom after freedom after freedom. And I'm sorry to say, but the church is even worse. For the sake of not offending Muslims, we've had Christian bishops cover up the cross in our churches. What a ridiculous thing. We've had ch Christians cower from the idea of evangelizing Muslims or standing up to the Islamist political project because they are scared of conflict and they are scared of being called names. But is that the way of the Christian? Should Christians act from cowardice? Let us consider what the scriptures say. Because the scriptures do not support cowardice. In 1 Chronicles 28.20, Cash, ask Amy to take that argument somewhere else. In 1 Chronicles 28.20, we read, David also said to Solomon, Son, be strong and courageous, and the work, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God my God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Sister, please, please, don't feed the trolls. Don't feed the trolls. They only behave like this because no one will ever listen to them. Brothers and sisters, you are called to stand firm and let nothing move you. Stand firm against the Islamist political project. Stand firm against the progressive political project. Stand firm, Christians. In Ephesians 6.10 it says, Finally, be strong, be firm in the faith, be courageous. Be strong and stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. How is it courageous to cower against the Islamist political agenda? How is it standing firm to allow the Islamists to seize your freedoms one by one? How is it courageous not to stand against the blasphemy of the progressives. How is it not, how is it not, how are you courageous if you do not speak out for the cause of the church? I encourage you to be discipled by Christian teaching, not by secular liberal progressive culture.
Any questions on the topic? On the topic. No, this sister first. Go on. You don't have a question. Okay. Bob, yeah. I watched you on video last week, yeah? A question on this topic, bro. Okay. I watched you on video and you said a few things about the Torah, yeah? No, this is on this topic. But can you answer my question? Now? Later, I'll come and find you and talk no, to you. No, I'm about to go home. Then go home because I'm talking on Why this topic. Why don't you want to talk to me? I am happy to talk then to talk you. Then talk to me then. But I'm talking about this topic. Uh -huh. No, because Ladies guy, and gentlemen, any question on the topic that I've no, just talked no. about? Talk to me. Talk to me, Joe. Talk to me. Talk Chris, to me. do you want to have tell another me about, go? Tell me about. Tell me about. Wait. Tell me about Jesus. We're not, I'm not you, because you're being rude. I'm not going to no, talk no, to you no. today. Tell me about Jesus. I'm not going to talk to you. But why are you a liar? I'm not going to talk to you. Why are you a liar? Why are you a fucking liar? Any questions? Shut up! Why are you a fucking liar? You're a liar. Ladies and gentlemen. Answer the question. You're a fucking liar. Every now and then. It's all right. You're a liar. You're going to do out. It's not going to do out. You're a Ladies liar. and gentlemen. Answer the question then. Tell me about Jesus. Speaker's Corner attracts people who are emotionally yes. unstable. Yes. Yes. This Emotion is all that you have here. Yes, yes. That's okay. what you said. That's what I came to ask you. Are there any so, top questions no, answer the on question. this topic? You're a fool. You, uh, behind okay. my back, you, uh, you ask me, answer my question. Okay. Tell no me questions. about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. Okay. You want to tell me about Jesus? Don't engage him. Jesus. Don't engage him. Yeah. Amy, don't Amy engage him. Talk. Tell me about Jesus. A man. Chris, he's a human being. Yeah. He's a man that goes to the toilet. That's You said that's your God. There you go, bro. A human being, flesh. Don't Do you want to talk to me? Jesus. Do you want to talk to me? Okay. You don't want to talk to me. You, you guys are liars. You guys are liars. You you guys are liars. Tell me about Jesus. The fucking liar. Heart. You guys are going to be dead. You don't obey no laws. The way he did in the fact he's killed your descendants, you guys are fucked. I'll pray for you. Pray for yourself, you obey no laws. I thought you had the truth. You had the truth. You've got the truth, yeah? Tell me about Jesus, you idiot. Ignore them. This is the problem. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. His name is Yahusha. What does Isaiah 43 3 says? You need help. He wants to go in Yahusha, not Jesus. Are there any questions? Can you tell me his true name? What's his name? So the question was, Remember, Jesus is Because the Torah is alone. The Torah is forever. Jesus! The reality is that you are a Christian. When you pray to Jesus, you are a Christian. The Western You are a Christian. You are a Christian. Jesus is rubbish! But they will do nothing. Jesus is rubbish! Only Yahusha is Savior. All power is in Yahusha. Only Yahusha will save. Yes, it's Yahusha. How the power? Too much, bro. Must organize us. Only Yahusha. Outside of the state. Jesus is the way to hell. To tackle the problem. To tackle the problem of the progressive political project and to tackle the Jesus problem the of the help. Islamist political problem project. Because Western societies are governed by an ideology that means that they see no problem to tackle. Any other questions on the topic? Any other questions? So, Let's be clear, the progressive ideology is blind to see the dangers of an Islamist ideology because the progressive ideology confuses two categories, race and religion, as if they are the same thing. And rightly, progressives don't want to be racists. But because they don't want to be racists, they ignore the existential threat and challenge coming from the Islamist movement. And that is why they never do anything to stand up against it, as per the examples that I gave earlier. Any other questions? I want to mark something. Try to don't call them Muslims, call them Mohammedans because that's the correct way. That, that's just one way of describing people. Okay. 
Yes. So, is the apathy of the church because of a lack of knowledge? The answer is yes. We Christians are politically, socially and economically ignorant of how our lives are influenced by those forces. And as a result, we don't see how discipleship plays out politically, culturally, economically and socially. And so we consistently surrender the governing narrative of social customs, political agenda and economic practices to narratives that are not influenced by Christianity. We reduce our Christianity to our private faith and to the actions of the congregation. And we need, as Christians, a bigger vision that goes beyond us and goes beyond our congregational organization. Any other questions on the topic? On the topic. No, it isn't. No, this is not the topic. Any questions on the topic? No, any questions on the topic? Any questions on the topic? No, JC, on the topic. He should have asked a question on the topic. Happy birthday. Any questions on the topic? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, join with me in wishing this hat man a happy birthday. What's your name, bro? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. This is between you and me. Don't argue. Thank you. Any questions on the topic? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to go again, Chris? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions on the Christian faith that you would like to ask? Can you prove to me that Jesus is God? So, the question is, can we show that Jesus is God? Christians believe that Jesus is God for the following reasons. Firstly, Jesus taught his own divinity. He said that he was God. Two, Jesus' followers recognized that he was God and taught the same as Jesus, that he was divine. Three, Jesus did the things that only God can do. For instance, I'm answering his question. Wait. He forgave third party sins as only God can do. He commanded nature by the power of his word and nature obeyed as only God can do. And the fulfillment and consecration of his divinity was that he raised himself from the dead as only God can do. Him first, then you. If Jesus is the son of God, uh, if, sorry, if Jesus is God, how is he the son of God? So, the question is, if Jesus is God, how can he also be the son of God? Clearly Jesus calls himself the son of the father. So Jesus identifies God as his father. So when we say that Jesus is the son of God, we're saying he is the son of the father. But if 
God does not change and he has always been the father, then who has he been the father to? Eternally. He has been eternally the father of the son. And if the son is eternal, who is eternal? Answer the question. Who is eternal? Answer the question. Answer the question. He doesn't want to answer the question. So I'll answer the question for him. The only one who is eternal is God. So therefore, Jesus is not only the Son of God, but he is God himself. Your question. Can the universe exist without God? Can the universe exist without God? No. No. But we agree that. No, I've answered your question. I thought that was your question. Let someone else ask a question and I'll come back to you. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'll come back to you. There was him as well. So the question is, aren't the scriptures meant to be read allegorically? The reality is that for 2,000 years, the church has had a tradition of how to read its scriptures. And it is not simply allegorical or literal. This is the position of uneducated Christians. The reality is that the church uses multiple keys of interpretation of the scriptures. And Christ's statements about his divinity are not allegorical. Go on, bro. Back to you. So if we agree that there is no universe without God, yeah? Yes. We do agree with that. But we agree that Jesus died as well. Is and that a question? God. Yeah, how is that possible? That's a question. So, <laughs> the question is, ladies and gentlemen, if Jesus is God, how could he die? The question itself... I'll restate your question then. My question is, as we agree that there is no universe without God, yeah, but we agree at the same time that Jesus died, how is that possible then? Okay, so the question is, how can the universe continue if Jesus being God dies? Have I got your question right? The question itself yeah. is fundamentally flawed. And let me explain why. And you see, and you see, Muslims don't like to be corrected. No, let me finish. Let me finish. He doesn't even. Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Say Muhammad. Was Muhammad a prophet? Was he? Were you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Okay, I'm going to answer his first question, ladies and gentlemen. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, Muslims don't like to be corrected. But we Christians should be bold in correcting them. We Christians have never taught that the divinity dies. We've never taught that. That's what Muslims in their ignorance think that we have taught. Come forward if you can't hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Muslims are wrong to think that the divinity died. After I've answered his question, learn some manners. 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 No, ladies and gentlemen. No, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, JC. Learn some manners. Learn some manners. I'm trying to answer his question. 
Even he's asking. Come here, come here. Shh, come in, come in. Shush, shush. Okay, please be quiet. Hold your sign, but please be quiet. So, ladies and gentlemen. I am son of God. Oh, bro, bro, please. I am no. Messiah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I am son of God. I will Hallelujah. answer your question, I promise. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting for the emotionally unstable people to stop. Okay. I am Messiah. No, let, no, I'm answering his question. Let me answer this brother's question. Thank you. Thank you. I am son of God. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. I am Messiah. Thank you. I will prepare new world Thank you. for Jesus. Thank you. I will, you idiot. Thank you. You have now knowledge. Thank you. Uncle, thank you. God has given me permission thank you, to rule the world. Thank you. Hallelujah! You weren't, you weren't bothered by Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah! I am son of God! Bro, I'm waiting for you I two to show up. When you two show up. So, ladies and gentlemen, back to this guy's question. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. So the Muslims get it wrong from the beginning. We Christians don't believe that God died. So what do we believe? We believe that the person of Jesus Christ in his flesh, in his humanity died. The divinity did not die and so there was no threat to the universe's existence. And that, sir, is the answer to your question. Okay, your question. So if, you, if they believe that, why don't you just leave them alone? The Muslims should be leave alone. In your opinion, they're wrong. Yeah, so leave them alone. Why don't you make, uh, stop all these things and why don't you just get along with each other? Okay, so the question is, ladies and gentlemen. Acknowledge the existence of Can I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. shut up then. So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, since Muslims get it so wrong when they talk about the Christian faith, why don't I just leave them alone? I'll tell you why I don't leave them alone. Why? Because they don't leave my brothers and sisters alone in Nigeria. Because they don't leave my brothers and sisters alone in the Philippines. They don't leave my brothers and sisters alone in Pakistan. They don't leave my brothers and sisters alone in the streets of London or the streets of Bradford or in this park where they challenge Christians about their beliefs and where they try to harass Christians in this very park. So that is why I don't leave them alone. If they can criticize Christianity, I can criticize Islam. Listen, one question. What do you smoke? What one do you, question. What do you addicted to? Do you, what, what do you take, man? You have so much power, man. I need to be knowledgeable like you. Okay, any intelligent questions? <laughs> yeah, go on. And then you. What happens during the rapture? Tell us about the rapture. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, is about what happens in the rapture? Ladies and gentlemen, what happens in the rapture? Ladies and gentlemen, the rapture is an American fiction of poorly educated Christians from America. It is a doctrine that cannot be found in the church past a hundred years. The rapture, as understood by those who propagate it, I do not believe will happen. But to answer the question, some Christians believe that in the blinking of an eye, all the Christians in the world, in one moment, will be removed and taken from this world, and the only ones that will be left will be non-Christians, and then new Christians will re-emerge because of this cataclysm. But I don't believe that that is what will happen. Him first, then you. Go on. 
Are you saying that if I accept Jesus as my saviour, I'll go to heaven? Is that what you're saying, yeah? So the question is... It's two questions, actually. And following that question... No, one question. It's a two-part question. It's a two-part. It's one question. It's my, no, it's my Q&A, yeah. and I'm taking questions from him right. after you. Can I change my question? So, yes, of course. Can I change it? Yeah, right. go on. You know those people that existed before Jesus? Yes. Who do they accept as their saviour? Brilliant question. So, ladies and gentlemen, what about those people who were born before Jesus? The scriptures teach that after the crucifixion, the soul of our Lord descended unto the dead, so that even those who died before Jesus will have the opportunity to accept Jesus. So that answers your question. Well, while they're dead? No. Yes. That's impossible. No, it isn't. How can you Go on, your question. Are you forfeiting your question? Because I'll be going to him next then. How do they accept Jesus? Okay, let me go back to him. Uh, no, no, no. Let me go back to him, then to you. Go on, your question. Yeah, but if they're dead, how do they accept Jesus? So, ladies and gentlemen, how can the dead in Hades accept Jesus? We Christians believe that the death of the body is not the death of the soul. Even Muslims believe that. They believe in the idea that your soul is tortured in the grave. So neither Muslims nor Christians believe that just because the body dies, the soul dies. We Christians don't believe that the soul ceases to exist just because the body dies. Now let me ask, let him take a, no, let him ask a question now. Go on, sir. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. No, stop being rude. If you want me to come back to you, don't be rude. Go on. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. Go on. Your answer about the rapture, doesn't it illustrate the problem with Christianity? So why is your version of Christianity superior to other versions of Christianity? Great. So the question is, Christians disagree about stuff, so how can I be sure that my version is the right one? But ladies and gentlemen, those that understand the Christian faith know that there are certain core doctrines that you have to believe to be a Christian. And on these core doctrines, all Christians agree. Examples. Belief in the Trinity. Belief in the Incarnation. Belief in the Crucifixion. Belief in the Resurrection. Belief in the Ascension. Belief in the Return of Christ. Belief in Baptism. These core doctrines every Christian agrees and without which and without which there is no Christian identity however however Christians do disagree about things like the rapture like the governance of the church you've just lost your right to ask a question the governance of the church like for instance, how many books are in the Old Testament? But these questions are secondary questions of importance, not primary questions of importance. And Christian identity is built on core doctrines, not secondary doctrines. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Muslims. No, you lost your right. Sorry. No, I have a right to ask you. And I have a right I'm not to ignore you. With the I have a right to ignore I'm not you. Satisfied with the answer. Tough. You were rude. One, then you have failed. Any <laughs> other questions? Yeah, go for it. You can't say a can't Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Freedom of speech. I've got freedom to ask you 100 questions. Okay. Any questions about Christianity? Yeah, I have one. Can I get more water, Jason? No one's asking. All right. No one's asking. Can I ask now? Right. So what I'll do instead? Let me debate this, brother, about the Quran. So I'd like to ask you a question about the Quran. Yeah, go on. So, 
Would you agree that the Quran yeah. addresses the Christian belief in the Trinity and condemns it? Yeah, it condemns it, yeah. Right. Where does it condemn it? How does it condemn it? It condemns it. It does condemn it. How and where? In many, in many places in the Quran. Can you... Uh, please use Google. Don't feel embarrassed. Oh, so you want me to look and search out of the 6,000 verses and waste time? Just find nice one. Trick. Nice Just trick. Just find one. No, no, no. It does. I'm telling you it does. Take my word for it. I'm a Muslim. No, no, no. Take my word for it. It does. I agree with you. It does. So carry on then. But, right. Can you show me what, what is the Trinity? It's believing in three gods, right? Nope. Yep. It's nope. one God it's split into three. Nope. It's not that either. What is it then? It's a belief that there is one God. Yeah. And that God is the Father, is the Son, is the Holy Spirit. So God is three. That's what Trinity is. God is three. Three what? God is three. Three what? You tell me. Three persons. So God is three people. Three persons, yeah. Three people. Uh, look, you, you, I mean, if I say persons and you ignore that, one, that's up to you. One person. So. You can't say two persons. Can you make, show me. You can't say persons, it's people. Can you show me. Can you, that was grammatically wrong, by the way. But can you show me in your great infallible book where the Quran condemns the worship of the Holy Spirit? It doesn't literally condemn it. But that's the Trinity. No, that's the angel Gabriel. No. You said we're talking about what the Quran says about the Trinity. Right. The Quran condemns in the worship of the Trinity. Well, who does it? Who does it list as no, the no, Trinity? No, no. It condemns the ideology of Trinity. Yes. And who does it list as Trinity? When the Christians say the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one. Right. So show me where it mentions the Holy Ghost as being it? divine. Have you, have you seen it? Shall we look at what he says? Yeah. So you show show, me yeah, I'll yeah. show you. I'll you know show you. It is. Yeah, I'll show you because you clearly don't know. No, I don't. Yeah, you don't. No, I, I got the. I, at least I admit I don't know. That's so fine. You can tell me. I'm not trying to. This and is, I can correct you. Bro, this isn't a gotcha moment. No,